Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great today. So in the last week or so, I've been making promises that I would come up with a documentary in which I hope to explain to us the dire situation in which we have found ourselves on the continent of Africa. And uh, this is a situation where at this very time in our lives as Africans, um, you may not believe this, but the colonial powers are heading for the end game. They want to go for the kill and this has been in the works for so long and unfortunately many of us do not know this and that is why the so-called the so-called president of nigeria would have the effrontery to actually call on africa an africa that, is, that we all regard as a recolonization force as an occupying force he will call on them to relocate their headquarters to africa and come to Africa to actually carry out their recolonization program. This is a sitting so-called president of a powerful African nation that is now being messed up today in the eyes of the world. And so my aim today is to help you make sense of all of this madness that is going on. Look at the way Nigeria is today. Look at what is going on everywhere. You go to Southwest, you have people saying, we don't want to be a part of Nigeria anymore. You come to the Southeast, you have people saying, we don't want to be a part of Nigeria. The Middle Belt, they don't want to be a part of Nigeria because of course, Nigeria was forcefully and illegally amalgamated by the man that I call the first son of Satan, Lord Lugard. You know, and since that moment, nothing has ever worked in Nigeria. It, they did it intentionally because they knew that the component things that they were actually amalgamating were never going to be able to work. You know how they work, right? They always say we divide to rule or we divide to conquer. So when they bring two incompatible or three incompatible units and bring them together, they're doing it actually for, for, for the purposes of controlling those people and ruling them for life because they know that no matter what happens, they will never be able to actually agree. That's what they did with Nigeria. They brought them together, brought all of us together without our seeking our consent. And they brought us together by force and forced us to live together as one. And we had never agreed from that day one till this day. Okay, so in order for them to continue to entrench their wickedness, they have continually imposed wicked leaders on us. They have continually made sure that fraudulent and hopeless people were, were made leaders in Nigeria, people who were incompetent. And that's what we have today in Nigeria, a very incompetent man sitting at the helm of affairs as Nigeria's president. And the climax of it or the peak of his incompetence was him reaching out to Africa, an African command of the U.S. Army that was rejected by literally every single nation on the continent of Africa. It is Buhari that is now reaching out to them and telling them to come to the continent of Africa. Here is a report here. He says, Buhari asks U.S. to relocate Africa to Africa. And he says, President Muhammad Buhari Tuesday urged the United States to reconsider relocating U.S. Africa Command Africa from Stuttgart, Germany to Africa, nearer the theater of operation, admonishing the international community to support Nigeria and the sub-region in tackling growing security challenges. As if Africa doesn't have enough boots on ground to deal with regional security challenges. As if Nigeria doesn't have enough strong men on ground to deal with regional security challenges. What happens to actually empowering the boots that we have on ground? What happens to empowering the men that we have in uniform already? If there was no plan to decimate and destroy us, if there was no plan to actually pave way for Africa to show up in Africa, why are our military being messed up on a daily basis? Recently, I put out a video about Nigerian military and the stuff that they're going through at the battlefront since they started fighting Boko Haram under Buhari. These guys have never had the right weapons to fight. 
And this is not CNN doing it because they will never go to cover that. This is not me just making stuff up. The videos are everywhere on social media. The soldiers aren't waiting for anyone to come and tell their story. They are telling their own story with their smartphones. They are telling their stories every day. Many of them are running away from the battlefront. Many of them are being led to go and fight Boko Haram with weapons that were too old to even fight battles in the 1950s and 40s. Meanwhile, Boko Haram is so well equipped with some of the latest, most modern fighting weapons you can think of in the world. And you send the military of a nation that is the sixth largest oil exporter in the world, and they go in front of Boko Haram and become extremely vulnerable. And nobody says anything about it on the international scene or anywhere, even locally. Everybody just stays quiet. And you don't see there's a plan to actually make way for these people to come in and recolonize us. This is how it works. Nigerian military got nothing to fight with. We just send our boys out there to go and suffer and die. And military bases are being overrun and they are able to report this in the news for us to read every time. Boko Haram taking weapons that were bought for the Nigerian military. This thing happening every time. The former president of Nigeria, Abacha, says when something like Boko Haram terrorism lasts more than a day, then the government has something to say or know something about it. He said it should never last more than a day. That's him. I'm quoting him. How come we have Boko Haram on the borders of Nigeria fighting and taking over places? Pushing in to the point they are now a stone throw away from Abuja, the capital city. And the government is not able to do it with all the allocation they give. The kind of money that these people claim every year to buy weapons. Ah, my God. It will take care of so many nations for years to come. And yet, after all that money is approved, where are the weapons to fight? Do you don't know who the Nigerian military are? You have no idea, unless I tell you. I was invited by the former... Liberian ambassador to the USA. I am one or two other friends. We're invited to the National Press Club down in Silver Spring, ND, Maryland, US. And what were we doing there? We went to preview a documentary that was produced by the granddaughter of Walt Disney. Her name is Abigail Disney. She did a documentary about Liberian women. It's called Pray the Devil Back to Hell. It's just a documentary that detailed the role that the Liberian women played in bringing the kind of democracy that Liberia, the kind of democracy that Liberia is enjoying now. I mean, it's moving from the wartime Liberia to the democratic so-called Liberia. The role that women play to bring Liberia to that place. But in that documentary, something very amazing happened. They focused a lot on the role of the Nigerian military how they brought peace, how they compelled a lot of these militants and these warriors to stop and lay down their arms. Nigerian military did the same thing in Sierra Leone. They did it in Sudan. They did it in different parts of Africa. Nigerian military dominated Ekomok. Wherever there was trouble on the continent of Africa, they showed up and peace was restored. Wherever there was trouble, they showed up and peace reigned. That was Nigeria's military then. What stopped the colonial powers from empowering these guys? What stopped them from making it even stronger to take care of our own destinies by ourselves? But no, that was not to be because we had never actually been in charge of our own destinies. The colonials hate us so much, they never ever wish that we should be free. And now that the die is cast, they decided to move in for the end game, to recolonize Africa. The recolonization of Africa has been in their minds for so long. 
And I'm going to give you proofs because that's why this is called a documentary. I'm going to read you something that was credited to the, the current Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Africa should be recolonized, Boris Johnson. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson had suggested that Africa should be recolonized as it's the only solution to the plight of Africa. In an article titled, Africa is a mess, but we can blame colonialism, published on 2nd February 2002 by The Spectator magazine, the now British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said colonialism should not have ended in Africa and that the colonial power should not be blamed for the current status of the continent. This is the man who is at the helm of affairs right now in the UK. The current Prime Minister 18 years or 19 years ago actually said that colonialism should not have ended in Africa. He is still believing that till today. And guess what? It is at the time that he is the British Prime Minister that the end game of the colonial powers is about to play out. You think it's all a mere coincidence? No, it's not. It's all well calculated. But he was not alone. He was not the only one. <laughs> Let me read you something that happened 2019. British Prime Minister fires Defense Secretary who planned to invade Zimbabwe. I did a video about this. There's a guy called Mr. Gavin Williamson. So British Prime Minister Theresa May has sacked her Secretary of State for Defense who drew up plans to invade Zimbabwe and at least four other African countries and wanted war with China. And wanted war with China. We're going there. I'll take you somewhere. Just follow me. Now, quoting sources, the Sunday Times said Mr. Williamson drew up plans for the British Armed Forces to be sent to at least five African countries, including Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Kenya, and Egypt. While Ministry of Defense officials told the paper that he wanted to find excuses to send in troops. There is always going to be an excuse. The excuse to send in troops is the reaction. I told you something about the problem reaction PRS code of the Illuminati. Because the Illuminati is the colonial powers and the colonial powers is the Illuminati. One and the same. And I told you how they react. There must be a reason for them to do whatever. There must be an excuse. So what they do is that they either create entirely the problem or they allow the problem to be created and then they get, get you to react to the problem and they place themselves at a place where they are the only ones you can call out to for solution when you begin to cry and when the problem begins to bite you hard. So they call it problem reaction solution. A problem is created or allowed to be created. You are reacting to it erratically and you're losing your mind and you are drowning and screaming for help. And the only person you can run to for help is who? The same one who helped to create the problem or who allowed the problem to be created. That's why they say he was looking for excuses. That's why, you see, the terrorism in Nigeria is something that our military could deal with. But look at how that they are allowing them not to fight. They are not giving them enough equipment even when they cry, even when they scream, even when they make videos, even when they say we are leaving, we are running away. Nobody cares. Boko Haram is advancing. And you're telling me that with all the money that they are voting for security in Nigeria is not enough. That's why, because they have to create an excuse for Africa to come on the continent of Africa and take over our continent uh, at the behest of the colonial powers. He was looking for an excuse. So when I tell you they want to recolonize, you need to follow me very closely because it's not a joke. Since 2002, now he is in power. And then Gavin, New Gavin, Gavin Williamson did his own and they kicked him out. Theresa May fired the guy. Oh, Secretary of Defense, you fire him because there was a leak. It was actually a leak that made us know that he, they, they had a plan to invade Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Egypt, and Kenya, and all these other places. It was a leak. The leak did not say 
that this statement was only by this guy that he wasn't he was the british minister of defense his, his minister of defense is not one man being the secretary of defense does not mean that he's the one that had the plan the entire nation had the plan and they succeeded in bringing the man who first spoke about it 19 years ago to become the prime minister. Remember the stuff I did sometime, the video I did where I showed you that they already knew that this man would be the prime minister. And they did something where they even told us that he was going to be down with COVID and going to go to hospital. They knew, they knew all these things. They knew they're coming to recolonize you and I. That's why when Yara Dua, the former president of Nigeria, was in power and he heard of AFRICOM, he said, no, never. AFRICOM will never be allowed to come on the continent of Africa. And all of a sudden, Yara Dua was sick and Yara Dua died. President Jonathan came after him and said, no, we don't want AFRICOM. Even when they created an opportunity for Africa to come, which was the bring back our girls situation, they created it. And Jonathan still stood his ground. You don't know, you didn't read the news then. Because when the whole bring back our situation thing, bring back our girl thing happened, immediately the first thing Obama did was, no, we are going to send 100 and something U.S. military forces on the ground. Jonathan said, no, but we have soldiers here. Maybe you can just help us to empower the ones on ground. Boom! They marked Jonathan for destruction. Bring back our girls. All of a sudden, how many hundreds of girls were taken? All of a sudden, Hollywood is interested in Nigeria. And they are carrying placards, Obama's wife, and all these celebrities. who will bring back? But before then, just one week or two before that, more than 300 boys were already kidnapped. Nobody talked about it. No international media. Because they needed an excuse for Africa to come. It was aborted by Jonathan, and Jonathan was also destroyed. So his own ambition was aborted as well. So the idea is you challenge Africa, you are either killed or kicked out of power. The secret code, you're living with it, and no one is talking because probably many people don't even know about it. And while they say AFRICOM is the African command of the U.S. Army, I'm going to prove to you through this video that AFRICOM really is a force created to protect the interest of the wicked colonial powers of Europe. I will prove it to you. If I don't prove it, call me out, but I'll prove it to you. So what is your take on why AFRICOM was established and what its real purpose is? Well, as Cindy Sheehan would say, to provide security for the robber barons, because unfortunately the problem that exists all over the African continent is the uh, insecurity of the people with respect to basic human needs, food and water and shelter and good governance. And instead, you've got... Um, the particular individuals who are able to wield power in Western capitals, including Washington, D.C., who are able to go in and steal the resources that um, ought to really accrue to the uh, people of those countries or of that continent. At a time really when the continent needs development, needs housing, needs health care, needs education, those core building blocks of healthy societies, the U.S. responds really with arms, with military training, with equipment and other military hardware. Thank you.
Boom, she was caught riding her trucks. She was about to deceive them and lie that all the nations in Africa are in support of Africa. Well, the contrary was still is the case. None of them supported Africa. They all were unanimous in their joint rejection of an African command of the U.S. Army birthing on the continent. And they said no, and she was about to lie and they caught her. Africa needs help with poverty. Africa needs help with insecurity. You can strengthen our own institutions. You don't have to bring yours on ground, what we already have. Strengthen our institutions. Genuinely come and help us, but not to come and replace what we have with what you've got because you want to protect your interest and not our interest. That's what is going on. And she was caught. That's why they took Gaddafi out for crying out loud. Muammar Gaddafi was being quite vocal about his opposition to AFRICOM and its, uh, its intentions on the African continent. So what can you tell us about Libya, its, its resources, and how it's been appropriated now by the NATO forces? Well, uh, what we can say is what uh, Mrs. Gaddafi has said, and I read an, an interview in which she said that had the Jamaharia government said yes to an AFRICOM base in Libya, then none of this would have happened. There was also leadership from uh, Muammar Gaddafi and the Jamaharia government on the establishment of a million person army to thwart the efforts of, of, of AFRICOM and the West to penetrate the um, African countries with the stationing of troops, which exactly is exactly like um, a return to colonial days, not just even neo-colonialism, where a few pawns were able to uh, act on behalf of the, the um, colonial master. We also watched as the Jamaharia was willing to put $90 billion on the table for United States of Africa. So there you have it, 90 billion US dollars. He was willing to put down on the ground. In fact, it is reported that he already put the money aside and said, let's have our United States of Africa. And then with one million man army, we can set up whatever it is that Africa is trying to give to us. And the colonial powers were so jittery. They were so scared. They began to shake. And what did they do? They pulled on the old trick. The old trick is using the lapdog, the U.S. Army. 